Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. Last week I machined the base for my micrometer stand that I designed in Fusion 360. And this week I want to machine this riser as well as the clamping nut that attaches to the top of it which facilitates a swivel joint. I am going to machine the riser from this piece of mystery metal, this little um, one inch piece of bar stock that I had sitting on the scrap shelf. Well, it's currently measuring a little bit more than one inch in diameter. So I want to machine this down to about three quarters of an inch. Well, it's a well-known tradition amongst hobby YouTube machinists that you must face off the part first before machining it. I need to take about 250 thousandths off of the diameter here, so we'll start with a nice healthy 50 thousandths depth of cut that's 100 thousandths off the diameter. and. This must be uh, some type of free machining or leaded steel because I'm getting a really good chip at that depth of cut. So I know it's not something like a 4140, which I usually have a lot more problems with. I am going to be putting a 24 TPI thread on the end of this, so I want to get close to that 750 thousandths mark as I possibly can without going over. So I'm going to switch this uh, insert out for a insert that's got a sharper end on it, um, and I th I'm hoping, the hope is, that I'll get a better surface finish. Well, it looks like I have about six thousandths to go, so I'm going to try to dial that in directly on the uh, cross slide and see if we can't take it all just in one shot. Well, that's really close. I do want to be at 750 thousandths or just a little bit less. I'm about a thousandths and a few tenths off. So I am going to dial that in on the cross slide and try to take about another thousand and a half off of the diameter.
Well, it looks like I managed to get this at 748 in about five tenths, which is actually perfect. According to the data for a 2A thread class, my max major is 748 and eight tenths. So I'm just underneath the max. So that's perfect for what we're trying to do. I am going to slow the lathe down quite a bit here because I just don't trust myself when I'm threading and we'll put a little blue dicum on the end piece here so I can uh, run a scratch pass and make sure I have everything set up correctly. I have a radius uh, grooving tool in the tool post. I'm going to cut a thread relief about 30 to 40 thousandths deep where I uh, expect the thread to end. Uh, I think this looks a little bit nicer than just stopping the thread uh, unless you're really good at it and I'm not so this will at least give me a little bit of wiggle room in cutting the thread and at least it looking nice. With the thread relief cut I'll go ahead and put the threading tool back into the tool post and get ready to cut these threads. I'm just going to use the threading insert to cut a nice lead-in chamfer on the end of this piece. So now I can go ahead and touch off and I'll zero the dial on the compound and we'll leave it set right there. We'll engage the half nut and cut a scratch pass. Well, and this is a good reason why you cut a scratch pass, because that's 12 TPI, not 24. So I've got to reset a, a lever on the gearbox. I'll blue this back up again with some more dicum, and we'll try the scratch pass again. Well, not only is that look better it is better so we are now set up for 24 tpi i chose that thread pitch for no particular reason i just wanted to cut it 24 tpi but uh, i learned from other hobby machinists on youtube to cut scratch passes and this is a prime example of why that's always a good idea well you can't see it from either of these camera angles that i have pointing at the lathe but i have a dial indicator set up on the back of the tool post on the compound and I have the compound angled at about 29 and a half degrees. My goal here is to cut these threads and to feed in the tool about 27 thousandths of an inch deep. That should give me a full profile thread. Well, for these first few passes, I'm um, advancing the tool about three to four thousandths, which gives me about a six to eight thousandths decrease in the pitch diameter. Well, that last pass pretty much took all or most of the blue off of the outside diameter, which means I should be getting some thread points. I'm checking this with a thread pitch micrometer. I have several of these in the zero to one inch range, 
um, and this one here is for thread pitches between 22 and 30 TPI. On the um, fixed anvil, it's actually a split V, so it fits over one of the threads. And the opposite side is pointed, and it will fit down into the valleys. Of course, the trick here is making sure that it's lined up, you know, true across from each other, that you're not, you know, tilted off of one side or the other, which will end up giving you a bad reading. So it's a little tricky in... Uh, threads of this size in getting it lined up just right, but I find this to be a heck of a lot easier than using the three wire method. Well, the maximum uh, pitch diameter for this size thread is 721 and 7 tenths. 722. And looks like I am about 3 tenths um, over that, which I think is fine. Okay. I'll live with that. Well, I'm going to speed the lathe back up here to a uh, normal operating speed here. And I have a 31 64th drill in the tailstock. Well, I plan on using a half inch chrome steel ball um, as the swivel joint here, and I want to give that ball a more of a, a coned area at the top of this riser to rest in. So, this 31 64th drill bit, I'm just touching the surface until I start to see a little bit of a full round hole, um, hole and I really only want to go in maybe 60 thousandths. Well I grabbed uh, the steel ball that I plan on using for the swivel joint and I think I want to go a little bit deeper here with the drill. Well, the riser gets bolted to the base with a socket head cap screw. And rather than cut this thing off and turn it around and drill it and tap it from the other end, I'm just going to go ahead and drill it, tap it all the way through from this end. We'll put a little anchor loop here, my lubrication of choice, on a letter F drill. And we'll drill it, you know, a couple inches deep into this stock. Well, I'm going to go ahead and power tap this thing. So I've got a 516, 18 TPI tap in the tailstock. But the first thing I'm going to do is slow this thing down. So we'll stop the lathe. I'll put it in back ear, and that'll make this a little safer for me. Thank you. 
The last thing I need to do is part this to length. So I've got the parting tool in the tool post and we'll move it over about an inch and a half. There's nothing precise about this. While the lathe uh, operations are complete, I got this little pip on the end of it. Uh, I'll use my deburring tool, my hand deburring tool here to try to get that off. Well, I want to go ahead and mount this to the base and see how it looks. I've got a inch and a half long, uh, 5 16 18 socket head cap screw. We'll get this tightened down and see what it looks like. Well, I think that looks pretty good. I think the proportions of the riser fit really well with the size of the base. So I'm really happy that the design is coming across as good in real life as it did on the computer screen. Well, the only thing I wish I would have done different is I wish I would have had a half inch uh, ball nose end mill. I think that would have made the seat for the ball much better. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. I just didn't have a whole lot of time to get into the shop this week. But I think next week we'll start working on the clamping nut. And I think I'm going to make that out of brass, so it should be interesting. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And a special thanks go out to those who are supporting this channel through Patreon or PayPal donations. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.